this talk of World War III that is coming from Zelensky. I mean, they're trying to stop the Chinese helping Russia, I guess. I think so. I think what's happening here uh, with the US statements, uh, with Ukrainian statements, is in a sense saying to China, don't do it. And I personally think we're more likely to see the Chinese attempting to introduce some kind of peace talks than we are likely to see them giving open support and ammunition and weapons to Ukraine. Because I think the Chinese are as concerned about the situation as anybody, and they cannot stay that because they have obviously backed Russia, but they are not happy about the situation. They're not happy about the impact on the world economy. They're not happy about instability. But basically, they cannot be seen to be criticising the Russians. So I think we're more likely to see them suddenly try to catch us unawares with some peace suggestions than we are with weapons happens to Russia, I feel. I might be wrong. So, effectively, we've got the Chinese yep. supporting Putin. Yes. We've got America supporting Zelensky. But there's been no talk of peace talks whatsoever. No. None whatsoever. And this, to me, is the interesting part. Zelensky keeps saying we must take, take back all territory. It doesn't just mean the Donbass yeah. or the Land Bridge. He means Crimea as well. I mean, there's been no conversation about this. Surely, surely that would be risking escalation in a huge way. Certainly. I think one of the bitter ironies of the situation is that Vladimir Putin has created a situation which is diametrically opposite to what is to his own advantage. A couple of years ago, Ukraine would not have accepted the loss of Crimea, but would have somehow learnt to live with it while negotiating. They, they would not have accepted the loss of Donbass, but they would kind of learn to live with it perhaps while they were negotiating. Now, with the blood and suffering that's happened since February the 24th, 2020, 22, we now a situation where Ukraine is completely incapable, understandably, of countenancing the loss of those areas. And in many ways, Vladimir Putin has created this situation himself, because these are also areas that he is completely incapable of losing, having carried out referenda this, in the Donbass, I mean, for example. This, for Putin, is now existential, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. And he's created this himself, because, as I say, a couple of years ago, we might be able to talk about this. But at the moment, it's just impossible for Ukraine to talk about loss of any sovereign territory after all the suffering. But Vladimir Putin has created situations here which he simply cannot lose on. So he has created an on pass for everybody, which is certainly very difficult, as long as he remains in the Kremlin. How many years could this last? Good question. He is clearly counting on the West losing resolve before Russia does. I don't think that will be the case, because clearly that is concern um, in public opinion or within Italy, for example, within Germany, elsewhere. But I think, actually, that the West has dug in for the long run. And the question is, has Russia? I mean, I think we will see perhaps an increased mobilisation, perhaps, calling people back to the colours, but that will make it increasingly unpopular across Russia because that will spread the load of casualties. So he has bet the farm and his bet has been called.